Welcome to the Infernal Brotherhood of the Scruffy Looking Nerve Herders. It is early Saturday morning, so I'm still drinking my coffee. I hope you'll excuse me. Uh, today I'm going to provide my review of the Willow comic adaptation. We'd like to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and click that stupid bell for all those other stupid reasons <laughs> that people ask you to do that stuff. So this is the uh, collection of the three comics in one volume, but it is the exact same comics that I read for the past three weeks. And, you know, as with, uh, hey, William, thanks for joining live. Good to see you, man. It's been a while. As with all of the other um, projects on this channel, after I'm finished, you know, consuming it, I want to give you my review of it because honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, got fog my throat. Uh, as with, you know, any of these uh, reading comic or books or whatever, it, I don't really give you any commentary. I just deliver what it is. And so I'd like to sort of contextualize it after the fact and give you an honest review of it. And the fact is, is that, you know, this is a three issue comic book adaptation of the film by the same name. So they have to cut stuff out. However, they actually were much more faithful to the script than the film was which is pretty surprising. And we also saw this in the novelization of Willow, the film, which was amazing. But, uh, you know, this comic, you get those, the, the visual cues along with it. <laughs> One thing that I found really challenging to do while I was uh, performing the readings of these comics is not give the film language as I was reading, because, you know, they changed the language a little bit because, you know, originally the script is delivered, uh, the actor and director interpret the script lines, the novelization follows the script much more closely, but we're all used to the film. And so I'm trying to deliver the lines as they were delivered in the film, but the language is different in the comic. And so I had to constantly edit it and change it and stick just to the script on what was on the page rather than what I know the characters say in the film. So it's not all different, but you know, little words here and there were changed around or omitted entirely. And that <laughs> ended up being much more difficult than I ever anticipated it being, anticipated it being at all. So again, this was published by Marvel Comics in August, September, and October of 1988, each issue in the next month. It was written by Joe Duffy, illustrated by Bob Hall, and inked by Romero Tangal. The letter was Joe Rosen, and the colored was uh, Bob Sharon. It was also edited by Bob Budiansky and Tom DeFalco. And I think it's important to call out all these creators' names because they spent a significant amount of time sketching, inking, coloring, lettering, and conceptualizing these three comics. And it's never going to be easy when you're taking a film or a script or a novel and then trying to condense that down into three comics. And the, you know, a comic book is not very long, you know, it's like 24 ish pages. So you don't have a lot of dialogue. You don't have a lot of monologues. You don't have a lot of inter thoughts being presented as you can in a novel. I mean, it's a tall order. And so you got to tip your cap to these people who are doing this hard work and actually putting it out there for us, the fans to sort of geek out over and love. Now, it had some wonderful scenes in this comic that, again, were omitted from the film. It referenced the Fish Boy, which was a wonderful adaptation of the Fish Boy, I thought. Uh, it included the fact that uh, Mad Mardigan stole Kale's girl, <laughs> which, you know, is this wonderful uh, interaction at that snow uh, Nakmar army, um, I don't know, encampment where uh, Mad Mardigan was in a cage with Willow. And Kale's walking by and Mad Morgan's like, oh, shit, <laughs> this guy's going to see me. And then uh, they just have this little interaction. And Mad Morgan's like, no, I'm not Mad Morgan. And that dick stole my girl. And Kale's like, yeah, me too. <laughs> just, you know, sort of absurd. It also had this really wonderful inclusion of when the Nelwins were moving uh, to try to get to the crossroads, they came across uh, Kale's army. Which, yeah, of course you would. I mean, they're there. Uh, but it was omitted from the film. And I just, I think little bits like that add wonderful texture to the comic that would have been, you know, probably not missed 
if they didn't include it, but it added just that extra little, uh, I don't know, a little flavoring that, that really made the comic worthwhile, in my opinion. It also had those scenes um, like the pohas on the, in the crossroads when they were sitting at the crossroads before they let Mad Mardigan out. The pohas are this sort of a culture of uh, ragtag warriors or, or just a band of ne'er-do-wells. Anyway, they were, came by and they literally lit Mad Mardigan on fire. Now, this was in the script. This was in the book. It was not in the film, but they included it in the comic. And it's just like two frames, I think. But it's so great because you get a you get context about who these pohas are so that later when Willow meets a bunch of them in the inn and he's asking for milk for the baby, they're telling him they're going to cook him because these are madmen. Like these are not normal human beings. You know, they're, they're sort of out of their mind. You th I, I think of them as like post-apocalyptic, almost like uh, uh, Mad Max type characters or something. But an entire culture surrounded it. So that's, that's kind of cool too. Um what else was in it that was wonderful? Uh, you know, we got to see a lot more Sorsha's engagement with her father and her mother. And, you know, Sorsha is a, a tortured character. She, we don't get that in the film because they're focusing on Willow and Mad Mardigan. But Sorsha was raised by her mother, who is this evil enchantress, <laughs> like this horrible human being. And she's forced to watch her mother in, uh, capture enslave and murder women men and children her whole life growing up never knowing who her father was never knowing you know only the lies that the mother is telling about him uh, i can kind of identify so it's a little bit of that because my mom lied to me about my dad too so you finally get to see her um you know watching mad mardigan looking at her army seeing her father entombed and sort of crying out to her from the crystal entomb uh, enchantment that her mother put on uh, all of Tearsling. And you start to finally realize that she is only acting as a beast because she's been taught to be a beast. And she's realizing that there's more to life. You know, she's looking at Willow and Mad Mardigan fighting insurmountable odds, including the Aborsisk. And you know, then, you know, compare and contrast that to her army who's just trying to kill two people in order to steal a baby and murder it. Like, that's who she sided with. And so she's finally realizing that, oh, wow, I was definitely on the wrong side of this fight. And I need to solve this. I need to fix this right now. It just, it, it helps you really understand her character a little bit more. And it was like three panels of the comic. And you get all of that in those three panels. I think that's really, really important to flesh out her character uh, because she's so important to Mad Mardigan. She's the woman that he ends up with, you know, that he, he finally stops womanizing and stops uh, gallivanting around with a bunch of just random women and just settling down with this one beautiful princess when you really look at it. Um, so this adaptation features several scenes that were deleted from the movie, as I'm talking about, some of which also appeared in Wayland Drew's novelization. And if you have not read Wayland Drew's novelization, I've already given a review of it. I've already talked about all the extra scenes that it had in it in other videos. Definitely do yourself a favor and check it out. All right, so in comic issue number one, what I want to do is just sort of walk through this a little bit, if we can. And I'm just going to scroll through... Oh, geez, that's going to take forever. I wanted to scroll through it. Um, well, here, this is what I'll do. We're going to get this working. I wanted to scroll through this just so you could see some of this wonderful illustrative artwork if you didn't happen to watch the readings of this comic as I'm talking about this. But Willow Upgood is given the task of delivering a baby girl named Laura Dannon to the Daikini Crossroads, not knowing that she has a great destiny and that his task will prove infinitely more difficult than he ever imagined. But these comics are great. Look at that. I just love the illustrations, you know, as, as uh, someone in the art industry myself, I just really, really respect and admire these uh, comic illustrators. It's something that I never really wanted to do myself, but I always loved, you know, I grew up with Superman, so I just love this stuff. And Mighty Mouse, remember Mighty Mouse? He had like a drug in a ring that, it, that he would have to take the drug, like this little pill in order to turn into Mighty Mouse, which is a weird message to send to kids. <laughs> you have to take drugs to be a superhero. But, uh, you know, this illustrations are great. Okay, so the, here's comic two. 
and they say, uh, in this issue, Willow Upgood and Mad Mardigan join forces to protect and transport the baby Alora Dannon, but by the end, uh, they end up being captured by Sorsha and the army of Nokmar. And this is where we first get our image. Oh, dude, you gotta love... First of all, Frangine and Rule are great, but also Lug? Come on. I mean, Lug's a detestable human being, but as a character in this, he's great. I'm, I'm so glad he was there because he just adds some really great comic relief and sets up Mad Mardigan as the womanizer. You know, he doesn't care who the woman belongs to. As long as they're DTF, he's DTF. Oh, I just love that scene too when they're like hiding in the grass as they're going by. And Kale, oh my gosh, Kale is such a great character. Seeing him in this context as well, I think is really great. Bad Morta, you gotta love Bad Morta. All right, so let's go to the third one here. So this, whoa, that was weird. That got really dark. So this is the third one. Uh, in this issue, Mad Mardigan is enchanted into falling in love with Sorsha as, uh, and I love this little ad for the board game which I have, which is an amazing board game. If you've never played it, you definitely should. And uh, again, this is really hard to get a hold of. But if you ever get the opportunity, definitely pick it up because it's a wonderful source book for Willow, the, like the world of Willow. But um, you are my sun, my moon, my starlit sky. Without you, I dwell in darkness. <laughs> like, it's so good. Oh, it went away. I dwell in darkness and it went away. God, I love seeing Sorsha and Mad Mardigan sort of fighting each other. I don't know. I was, I was tossed between... Or torn between either doing this or playing the DOS, MS-DOS video game. And I'll do that next week. But I just wanted to sort of take a little bit of time and, and go over this comic again. Because it is genuinely beautiful and uh, a lot of fun. This is such a great moment when she breaks away from him. This scene! I don't even remember this scene in the book! Like when they burn down where, where Mad Mardigan's using magic as well? That's amazing! Like... It just tells you that mag magic is in the words as much as it is in the individual if Mad Mardigan can help. You know what I mean? So cool. Just so, so cool. All right, so how do I get out of this thing now? <laughs> Let's get back to the review. Um, all right, so, you know, those are the three comics. They're great. Everyone loved them when they were watch uh, reading them or when they if you happened to watch them and stuff. I think my favorite part of all of this is definitely going to be the... Uh, the extra added scenes. I love Fish Boy. I really enjoyed seeing him. I I, I love seeing the Pohas attack uh, Mad Mardigan and Mad Mardigan and Willow both working together to burn down that that briar patch or that thistle, uh, th that thorn vine thing that was separating the maze from Tirasleen itself. Because I, I don't remember that being in the book at all, and I love that inclusion. Anytime you get to see a little bit of contextualizing with Kale, or even just get to see him more. I like it. Kale is such a underdeveloped character that could really be something amazing if given a little bit more love than he was given. Not literally in the character, but just in developing the character. Um, my least favorite parts about this comic is that, you know, it, I wish the language was closer to the film delivery. I know that's hard to do because you would have to then rescribe everything from the film, you know, get transcripts and stuff. But... I don't know. You know, when I was reading it, I had to do so much editing out of lines that were delivered one way in the film and then written another way in the comic. And that that took me out of the comic as much as these included images and the illustration drew me into it. So, you know, it was a little bit of push and pull throughout the whole process of that. Um, ultimately, I would highly recommend if you have the opportunity to pick up these comics yourself or just read them. There are places online where... You know, they're not the best, but you can actually read them online. So, you know, do yourselves a favor. And if you just want to watch my reading of them and you don't want to hear your own voice reading the, the text, you're more than welcome to check those out as well because those will remain up on this channel. As, you know, this is one, of, I don't know of any other YouTube channel that's really devoting this much time, attention, and love to Willow. So if you do, please let me know because I would love to, you know, share and collaborate with them, you know, in the future if possible. But, you know, this channel is going to be doing all sorts of things, including we haven't done a film commentary yet or a film review, which, uh, you know, Cameron and I, uh, the co-host of this channel, um, we both are sort of 
pulled in a whole bunch of different directions. So it's not always easy to get together to do that type of thing, but we'll try to do it. Um, we, uh, you know, we're going to be uh, doing episode reviews when the episodes drop in this November, I think it is, when this new series of Willow is coming out. So look forward to that. We're also going to be um, uh, continually developing out uh, those sort of snippet episodes, like those five-minute episodes that I started with about the lore of Willow. Uh, I'm going to continue doing those after I reread the Chronicles of the Shadow War because I haven't read that in a very long time. Um, it's been, I think, a little over a year. And I'm going to have to reread it and take a bunch of notes in order to create those because no one else has done online either. Not, like, not even the Willow Wiki has that. And so it's going to be, you know, all from scratch. So that's going to take me a little bit to get to. I also have the MS-DOS uh, game playthrough to get through. So there is a lot. My, my point of all this is to tell you that we have a lot more Willow content coming down the pipeline. And I hope you guys are enjoying it and you continue to tune in because we have a lot of fun with this show and this, um, this world that George Lucas created. And so we're going to be exploring that. Also, just as a quick sidebar. Our site, uh, Star Wars podcast, is once a month. When there's a, a Star Wars series going, we stop doing the the live uh, podcast and we do the episode reviews because it does take a lot of time. And so, um, you know, you can expect Andor is coming up. So at the end of this month, we're going to start our Andor reviews. And then um, as soon as Indiana Jones starts releasing information, we're going to be focusing on that as well. So you've got tons of content coming all over uh, George Lucas's uh, IPs on this channel. I hope you guys continue to tune in. Thank you so much. That is all the time I have to talk about the Willow comic adaptation from Marvel Comics. Thank you all for spending your time with me. Uh, would you? Uh, we would like to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and feel free to click that like button and share the video if you appreciate what we're doing here. And we thank you for it. Until the Infernal Brotherhood convenes again, my fellow scruffy-looking nerf herders, may the Force be with you. <laughs>